In this video, we are going to explore the quantile loss, an essential part of quantile regression, and see what it is exactly. In the last video, we talked about the difference between linear and quantile regression, and we mentioned that one of the differences is the objective function being optimized. While linear regression optimizes the squared error, or the log likelihood, quantile regression has its own unique loss called the quantile loss. Before we get into it, it's important to note that different losses or objective functions give rise to different solutions. If we take a certain loss function and take the expected value of it over a distribution, we will get different solutions. The notation here is for a theoretical distribution, but this also applies to any data that comes from a distribution. The squared error, for example, used by linear regression gives rise to the mean, when y is a random variable coming from some distribution. The absolute error gives rise to the median. As we shall see, this can be considered a special case of the quantile loss when the quantile alpha is equal to 0.5, that is, to the median. Finally, the quantile loss is denoted here by the Greek letter rho, and depending on the desired quantile alpha. It is defined to be alpha minus the indicator function that the input of the function x is less than zero times x. This boils down to alpha minus one x when x is less than zero and alpha x when x is greater or equal to zero. Here are concrete examples. If alpha is equal to 0 0.5, we get the following, which is proportional to the absolute value. Proportions don't matter in optimization problems, so we will get the same result. If alpha is equal to 0 0.1, we get the following. Let's view it in a graph as it will be more intuitive. In this graph, you can see the squared error and the quantile error. Notice that when I move the quantile, the error changes. Sometimes it gives more error to positive examples and sometimes to negative examples. Here I wrote down the quantile loss for the actual quantity we are looking at, which is the residual between the actual value and the output C. Since we constrain our output with a model, we replace C with the linear model x transpose beta. Let's try to get some intuition for this quantile loss. When alpha is equal to 0.5, both positive and negative residuals are penalized the same. That is, we want the same amount of points to be under and over the line, which is a definition of the median. When alpha is greater than 0.5, positive residuals are penalized more than the negative ones. That is, we want more points under the line than over it. When alpha is smaller than 0.5, negative residuals are penalized more than positive ones, so more points will be above the line. The exact balance between these lines controlled by alpha give rise to the different quantiles. I hope this gave you an intuition as to why the quantile loss works. Here again is a recap of some different loss functions, the squared loss of the mean, the absolute loss of the median, and the quantile loss here for the first quartile. But how do we know that this loss really gives rise to the desired quantile? Until now, you had to take my word for it. Now let's prove it. We start by replacing the expected value with its definition for the continuous case, an integral of the value times the PDF. Then we separate this integral to two parts, up to C and from C onwards. For the first case, the loss will be alpha minus one times y minus C. In the second case, it will be alpha times y minus c. We can collect for alpha and join the two integrals to one integral. We then use again the definition of expected value and the fact that the integral of the PDF sums to one to get this. Now we take the derivative of this expression with regards to c. From the first part, we only get minus alpha. For the second part, we use Leibniz rule to get this long expression. Note that technically, the infinity signs should be replaced with the limits as the value goes to infinity, but we'll ignore that for ease of notation. The first two parts of Leibniz rule cancel out because they are equal to zero, and we are left with the third part. The derivative of minus c is minus one, and both minuses become a plus. We are left with this. We want to find c, and so when taking the inverse function on both sides, we get that c indeed equals the quantile at alpha. Taking the second derivative gives us f of c, 
which is always positive since PDFs must be positive. So it's indeed a minimum point. Now to apply this to a regression, we replace C with the linear model and the minimization over C to minimization over beta. And we replace the theoretical mean with the sample mean. Notice that the one over N constant is not important for optimization sakes, so we can discard it. And this is our final loss, the quantile loss. We can replace it now in the table we made. The only thing left is seeing how we actually estimate the beta vector, which we will do in the next video. But that's all for this video. See you in the next one.